Yo, what's up, Doug? What's going on, buddy? Hey, what's up, Doug? Hey, man, got a quick Jeep 4.7 question. Oh, just a quick one, right? Yeah, quick, right? Um, so, my hydro fan isn't spinning as fast as I think it should. It's just kind of buzzing around at about an idle speed. Ooh, that's not good. Tell me, how's the fluid? Yeah, no, I topped it off. It is good. Uh, yeah, no, listen, Dano, it's not just the fluid level that you got to watch out for. You got to make sure you jimmy jam the right power steering fluid in there. No, I put the stuff that they gave me at the dealership. I gave them the VIN, and I said I got a hydro fan, and they gave me power steering fluid. Hmm. I know it's super important to get the right fluid. Mopar power steering fluid has a couple different variations available. Why don't you grab the bottle? Let me know which one they gave you. Yeah, I got it right here. Uh, Mopar power steering fluid plus four. Ooh, Buck, I'm sorry. I think they gave you the wrong bottle of power steering fluid. What do you mean it's the wrong fluid? Yeah, the hydro fan in the WJ needs Mopar power steering fluid, part number MS10838. What I think they gave you was the newer version of Mopar power steering fluid. I gotta change it out? I, I hate to tell you, but I think you gotta pull all that power steering fluid out and swap it with the right stuff. All of it? Yeah, bud. All of it. Jeep my life. Jeep my life, bud. Jeep my life. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dan H and welcome to the project. We are out here with our Green Hornet WJ. It's a 2002 Grand Cherokee with a 4.7 high output V8, which means it's got the hydraulic cooling fan. And because it's got the hydraulic cooling fan, it takes a specific power steering fluid. See, I knew that it took a different or a special type of power steering fluid, but I wasn't sure what to ask for. So when I went to the dealership, I said, hey, I need the power steering fluid with the hydro fan, and they gave me this stuff. They gave me the power steering fluid plus four. Now this is like transmission fluid. It's the red stuff, but unfortunately it's the wrong stuff. This stuff will not work in your hydraulic cooling fan. What you really need is this stuff. This is Mopar hydraulic systems power steering fluid and it's completely different. This says specifically developed to meet Chrysler material specifications MS10838 required for use in hydraulic power steering systems. So this is the stuff we want, guys, and this stuff is $20 a quart, and it's on the decline. They're getting harder and harder to find, and what makes it even more confusing is the original power steering part number was MS5931. Now, that stuff has long since been discontinued, and they moved on to this stuff. This is the, the proper replacement, but if you're shopping at the stores and you want to find a jug like this, you got to make sure that it has... Chrysler spec 5931 on it. So here's where we're at. We have a whole system full of this stuff and this isn't to be mixed with this stuff. So we got to drain the whole thing. And unfortunately the dealership didn't have many of these left. I only got one of these. So we are going to put this stuff in and it should be compatible with this stuff. So when this is out, we'll fill this and top it off with this. Oh boy, jeep my life indeed. All right, so we gotta drain the power steering fluid. Yippee! Um, I'm going to take out the air box so I can get more room to access all my power steering lines. And uh, yeah, <laughs> it's crazy to think that I had just put this all back together a couple days ago and I gotta take it all apart again. But <laughs> that's what happens. You live in your land, right? Not even close to what I wanted to do today, and I'm having major problems. Finally, airbox is out. Had to take the tire and the wheel well lining to get to it. Jeep my life. All right, here we go. 
this is probably the best access we could get to our power steering labyrinth. So what I'm gonna do is, let's see, all right. So power steering flows out of this high pressure line and it goes into the hydraulic cooling fan. Then it comes out of the hydraulic cooling fan and it comes into the power steering box right here. Then it goes out of the box into the cooler and then out of the cooler back into the return. There is also a return from the bottom of the hydraulic fan. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to detach all the returns and plumb them up into a reservoir so I could catch all the fluid. And I'm gonna run this thing and turn the wheel while pouring in my new fluid. All right, went to Home Depot, got some half inch outer diameter, three eighths inner diameter. First thing I'm gonna do is pop off this return and plumb this into a little reservoir. And I got a bunch of these barb fittings if I need to attach some hoses and finagle some more lines into a reservoir. So let's, uh, <laughs> let's try this out, yahoo. All right, we're gonna be running some power steering mouthwash. <laughs> All right, first one will be this one. Slider down. Oh yeah, that's a bleeder. Ugh. Come on, tube. that tube on there come on this tube on this line look at this beautiful brand new red power steering fluid <laughs> power steering fluid plus four and it's all going bye bye what a shame all right that line is done All right, my next drain point is going to be this line right here. This is a line that I made out of leftover lines from this line. I completely forgot that I bought a new line. So now is gonna be a good time to replace this line. But first, I'm just gonna disconnect this and then run a tube from here into this gallon jug. So we'll disconnect this now. There are my splices, a bunch of returns spliced, and they're all ran down into these two jugs. Let's see, I got my cherry mouthwash. That's filling up just by gravity. And you can see I got gravity filling this one too. So now I think I'm gonna run the engine and we'll let the pump eject the rest of this and I'll slowly add in some of the good stuff. All right, there's one more line that I wanted to drain that I'm not going to. It's the return line from the hydraulic fan to the power steering pump reservoir. It's a fatter diameter, and I'm not gonna be able to get my fittings on. In a perfect world, I'd like to drain every ounce of this red stuff, but uh, I'm not gonna waste any more time because it's about to rain on me. Jeep my life. <laughs> it's supposed to be a big storm coming through. Um, we'll have to flush it the way it is now. Hopefully we'll get enough out but uh yeah we'll uh we'll hope for the best all right here we go
right, once you think you've got all the bad stuff out of the reservoir, you could reattach the return to the cooler line. This way you're not just dumping new power steering fluid right into the gutter. Uh, I'm gonna connect these lines, then I'm gonna keep on going. I'm gonna keep adding some more fluid because there is some more red stuff in the power steering box. All right, well, since I already have one side jacked up, I jacked up both sides, got both tires off the ground. Now I'm gonna run the steering wheel left and right. We'll pump out the rest of the power steering fluid that's in the steering box. Catch it all on this bad boy and uh, gonna fill it up one more time. Hopefully this will be enough to complete the flush. All right, we definitely drained this thing of a lot of fluid. And again, we want this off the ground because we're purposely running this low. So we don't want to stress the system when it's low on fluid. So I've got to make sure it's jacked up off the ground. It can spin the wheel freely. So yeah, this thing is good and empty. I think that's a pretty good flush. These jugs are significantly full. So I think that's it, guys. Let's, uh, let's button this baby up. All right, and before I forget again, I'm just gonna replace this line from the steering box to the power steering cooler. This is a Sunsong 3401525 hose, and I'm gonna take it off with a 18 millimeter. There we go. That's what I like to see, nice clear fluid coming out of it, awesome. All right, got our new hose, and you always want to put on the new O-ring. Do not forget the O-ring, guys. They're very important. Forget the O-ring, you will have a leak. Lube it up, the little drippings. Hey, nice, I like this a lot better. It lets you replace the hose in the future instead of that nasty thing I had to grind off. Very cool. Always want to make sure you try to hand thread it as best as possible, as much as you can, to avoid any thread stripping. And it helps if you wiggle and twist, wiggle and twist. All right, I'm confident that it's not cross threaded. We pushed this down, felt the O-ring engage. That should be a nice tight seal. Now we'll crank her down. There we go, nice tight fitting, I like it. Now we'll just connect this line back to the cooler. Thumbs are too big. go look at all this stuff guys let's see look at all that red got the red juice out it's a shame this was all brand new let's see how much fluid we flush through Look at that, about three and a half quarts. 
Not a bad flush. All right, guys, I'm gonna clean up a little bit, button all this up, then we'll add our fluid and we'll cross our fingers. So I'll catch you guys in a little bit when this is taken care of. All right, see you soon. All right, guys, it is raining. I knew it was coming, just not fast enough. But I got everything back together and uh, hopefully it won't get too wet. Jeep my life, man. <laughs> so here we go. We got the good stuff. We're gonna put this in here. It's still got a little bit of that 5931 fluid, the Valvoline, but now we're gonna to top it off with the Mopar, the MS10838. So we'll put this in. All right, we will turn it on and we'll wiggle that wheel back and forth. Make sure the pump is flowing into the steering box and the fan and everything else. And we'll uh, check it in a minute. check our final levels there we go it's right up there didn't drop anymore and the color well it's mostly clear it's got a slight tinge of red but again couldn't get it all out but we did pretty good it is no longer that dark dark cherry red it is mostly clear so I'll call that a win come on there we go I think that's a wrap all right guys, that is how you swap out the power steering fluid in a 4.7 V8 Grand Cherokee with the hydro fan. Unfortunately for me, it didn't solve the hydro fan not spinning up to speed as it should. I think I have another problem. It's still got the hydraulic fan solenoid check engine light. We'll have to look into that in another video. <laughs> it's already raining on me. Jeep my life. <laughs> That's a phrase Doug and I started saying. When uh, things aren't going your way in the world of jeeping, let's say you put in a whole new hydro fan and the dealership gives you the wrong ATF, jeep my life. Uh, you finally get a new lift kit in your ride and all of a sudden you get death wobble, jeep my life. Or you flush out your cooling system, you start driving down the road and you're overheating, jeep my life. But also on a positive note, uh, I got a 4.7 V8 Grand Cherokee for basically nothing, so jeep my life <laughs> it's all good jeep uh is an interesting brand it keeps you guessing so doug and i are gonna put out some products that say jeep my life on it. so again thank you so much doug really appreciate the help uh wouldn't have solved it or got anywhere close to solving this problem if it wasn't for doug's bit of wisdom a little experience goes a long way so that is gonna do it um stay tuned for the next video where we dig into that check engine light we'll see what that's about so all right guys thank you for watching remember to like subscribe hit the notification bell and i'll catch you on the next project peace cheap my life bud cheap my life